Okay, I want to talk about the dipole antenna today. This is actually probably the simplest of all antennas, but it is definitely one of the most important to understand. Uh, it's very commonly used. Uh, it's basically a wire, and so it's one of the earliest antennas ever invented, and it shows up uh, pretty much everywhere. So, first, to understand the antenna, I want to talk about transmission line. So imagine this is some transmission line, and it's a large fraction of a wavelength, which means we can't use low frequency circuit theory, which means we have to understand how wavelength plays a role. Uh, so imagine that we have this transmission line here with uh, call it just a two wire uh, line. So it has current flowing on the top and on the other section, and the current is or the transmission line is open circuited which means the current will be zero at the ends and the current is going to flow in opposite directions so in this wire look at the current magnitude is zero here it's a peak and the current flows like this so on this top wire the current is flowing this way in this section and it's flowing the other way on this section over here and the current magnitude is peak right here about a quarter of a wavelength from the end and the zero here is a null a half wavelength away and on the other side of the transmission line the current is flowing in the other way which means the magnitude is going something like this so again we have the current flowing this way on the top wire and this way on the bottom wire so what happens if we start to bend this transmission line out so for instance we do something like this. So all we've done is take our transmission line and bent the ends up. And so again, it's still open circuited. And this, we'll say, is a very small amount. So we're talking like the total length here is less than lambda over 10. So we have a very small total length. Well, we'll see that, recall from here, this current is still flowing in this direction. So we have a small amount of current going up. That's this arrow. This arrow is coming down. We bend that down. So this one is actually going in the same direction. So now we have current going in the same direction, which means they're adding in phase. And this is ultimately going to produce the radiation. So when we have a length this small, we call it a short dipole antenna. And the directivity of this is about 1.76 dB. It's pretty much the smallest directivity you can find for any realizable antenna. Um, you can tell, so this is basically, if you look at the impedance in this direction, all you really have is two pieces of metal, so it's very capacitive. The same here. So we're going to have an impedance that's very capacitive, so the input impedance is going to be you know, the real part plus J, the imaginary part, this, for a short dipole, is going to be very small. There's not much radiation resistance when you have such a small antenna, and you're going to have a very large capacitive component, which means X is going to be much, much less than zero. So, because of the impedance isn't going to be anywhere matched to 50 ohms or any real transmission line impedance, you're going to have a very low efficiency for this antenna. It's also going to have very low bandwidth and those are the shortcomings of this antenna but ultimately the current is flowing in the same direction on either arm of this dipole antenna and this is what gives rise to radiation and the current here is adding in phase and so the, ultimately the polarization is going to be in this direction so we'll look at the radiation pattern in a minute but also so since the current is kind of decreasing in magnitude towards the end. Remember, zero current here and here. We actually have charge building up. So the current is flowing this way. You can think of current as a flow of positive charge, even though it's really a flow of electrons, which is negative charge. We have the current flowing this way. We have charge build up on the ends here. And so since it's a short thing, you know, we have what's called a dipole. It's a positive charge and a negative charge separated by a distance. This is where the term dipole antenna comes from, which is charge is accumulating on the end and oscillating at the frequency of interest. This gives rise to the radiation because the currents are adding in phase.
So the most common type of dipole antenna is the half wavelength dipole. So if we increase this such that the length from top to bottom is lambda over 2, then we're going to still end up with a sinusoidal current distribution if this wire is very thin. And the current is adding up in phase the whole way. So we have this current, large amount of current. Remember, this is just the bending of the original transmission line that makes this lambda over 2 dipole antenna. So this is a very common type of antenna. Um, the directivity of a half wavelength dipole is 2.15 dB. The impedance, if the wire is very thin, is something like 73 plus J42.6. We want to make the impedance real, which tends to minimize mismatch loss. So if you trim it back such that the length is about 0.48 lambda or so, you'll end up with an input impedance that's real, 70 ohms. Um, the efficiency, if you build one of these antennas, just put it in a coke chamber, you're going to get very high efficiency, like maybe 90%. Um, the bandwidth for a half-wave dipole is kind of smaller, you're looking at 7%. So, for instance, if you have a 1 gigahertz antenna, 7% means plus or minus 3.5% either way. It will work from 1035 megahertz down to about 965 megahertz. And if you want a larger bandwidth, you can fatten the dipole up. So instead of having, like, you can view the dipole as just a wire, if you fatten that up, something like that, uh, you'll tend to get a corresponding increase in bandwidth. That goes for just about every antenna. Fattening it up or taking up more volume will always give uh, rise to larger bandwidth. So we have our dipole antenna, and it turns out this will radiate at lambda over 2, 1.5 lambda, uh, 2.5 lambda, basically the odd multiples of a half wavelength. And so the question immediately is, why doesn't that work at 1 lambda, 2 lambda? So if you look at what's happening, recall for a half wavelength antenna, we have a current distribution that looks like this. It's a peak in the center. If this was a full wavelength, then we'd have a current distribution that looks something like this. So we actually have a current minimum at the center. And remember, the impedance is V over I. And so if I is zero, you know, the, the impedance is going to infinite. You're not going to be able to deliver power to the antenna, which is why a full wavelength dipole antenna or a two wavelength, three wavelength, four wavelength, will not radiate. The simple solution to that actually is to move the feed. So for instance, have one of the arms much longer than the other and just offset it. Then you still have the current adding in phase on a one, la one wavelength antenna, but you can get power to it. So that's a trick. As for the shape of the radiation pattern, so for a half wavelength dipole antenna, you tend to have something like this. It's donut shaped, and so the antenna is or oriented in the along the z-axis here. And so it's just a wire along the z-axis, and you get this omnidirectional pattern that's donut shaped. Now, if the antenna is one and a half wavelengths long, you'll end up with a radiation pattern that's a little bit weird. It looks like that, and so in this case, you kind of have peak radiation that's not normal to the antenna, it's actually in odd directions. So again, I'm talking about the dipole oriented this way. You know, the radiation is peak in this plane that surrounds it. But if the antenna is one and a half wavelengths long, the current distribution will look something like this. And it turns out that for a wave coming in at an angle, it'll actually capture more power. And the reason is just you end up with more, a c more coherent addition uh, due to the phase propagation delay down the wire at this angle than you do at this angle. So for antennas, uh, dipole antennas longer than you know, one and a half wavelengths, you can get a radiation pattern that's uh, asymmetric.